It should be just that easy to open and close your Airstream or RV door that has a similar latch to this right here. But in many, many cases, what will happen is the door will close and lock itself. Today I'm going to do an install and review on the lockout blocker. Rob Morsel, the inventor and manufacturer of the lockout blocker, reached out to me and provided me with one of his products for installation and review. He saw my video on Airstream's Kryptonite, which I'll put a link right up here, that discusses the lockout issue that Airstreams have. And what can happen, this locking device right here can inadvertently lock itself when you close the door. And when it does that, you're locked out of your unit and you can't get back in unless you have keys to come in and unlock that. So we're going to install Rob's product, see how it works. You can see what the installation process entails and then we'll do some testing. Rob's lockout blocker is available on his website. I'll post you a link to that down below. He's also selling this through Airstream Life and I'll put a link to that down below in case if you want to check out the product and maybe reach out to Rob and ask him about how it installs on your particular RV. The package came with the lockout preventer. It also came with a alcohol cleaning pad and a drilling template. You can order this with or without the optional handle which would be installed up here and you'll use this handle to close the door instead of using this right here. One of the issues with a lock-in situation is that this handle here can work itself loose and come off and then the occupants inside will not be able to open the door. So we're going to also be installing this handle. Tools required is a Phillips screwdriver, a 3 16th drill bit, some tape, and your cordless drill. First step is confirming the placement of the lockout blocker. Maybe hard to see, I'm dealing with black on black, but it's going to be placed something like this. So the operational process is that once installed, you would push this down to engage the lock like that. So you want to place this where it is just barely touching this peg. Now I've removed the black thing here just so that you can see it a little better. So mine is about uh, top of it's about halfway through the pin. It would clearly would block it from locking itself yet leave enough room for that. So let me get this installed and we'll come back and take a look at it. And for reference, the length is three and five sixteenths. Ready to stick it on. I've cleaned the surface. The instruction says to mark it with a pencil, but I'm going to do it this way because a pencil might be a little difficult to see. I'm going to place it right there. Okay, it's on. It's preventing this latch from moving. Yet, I can pull down a little on the device and the latch will go. And then coming back, still preventing it. So I think that's a good placement right there. Reinstall that. It's not going to close on its own. And then it latches. Then coming back. Installation of the pull handle, the instructions clearly state more than once that be extra careful that the pull handle is going to clear the screen door. And here's the frame of the screen door right here, if you can see that. So I'm going to place mine about right there. That would give me uh, at least a finger's width clearance there. And also try your handle, because your handle's got to come up. 
this handle here. You wouldn't want to get it so close that it's going to prevent that from coming up. So it's going to have to be rather high on this plastic backing here, yet be very aware of what's going on with your screen door. This is the drill template that comes with the kit. So you'll want to get your template in place. You can mark this with a pencil or a Sharpie, which might be the best thing to do. And then uh, come back and do your drill. I'm putting the template in place with just some painter's tape. To hold it there. Let me get the handle and check it again for clearance from the screen door. There is plenty of clearance there. There's plenty of clearance for the handle to go up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill it right there. I'll get the screen door out of the way now. This uh, backing plate comes off with three Phillips head screws here, here, and here. Again, you'll have to remove this little black tip of the latch to get that out of the way, and I'm going to temporarily put it right there. So let me get this cover plate off, then we'll come back and do the drilling. I've just about got this backing plate off, and I wanted you to see how this comes off and how this handle is attached to the backing plate. And we'll pull this last screw out and then pull it straight out. That was a gasket that goes behind it. It'll be easy enough to pull it in. You can see as this handle is moved, that device right there is what drives the locking mechanism. And if this ever comes loose in right here, and the handle comes off, you can see what a predicament you're going to be in. You're going to be locked under your unit. That's why I do not use the lock on this device, and I have been using the grab handle on the screen door to pull the door shut. So I really do like the feature of having this extra pull handle placed on there. I'm going to drill this out, and I'll be right back. The pool handle's all installed, and it's a pretty straightforward process. I do recommend you read the instructions and follow the steps in there to use a small drill bit to make a pilot hole, then come back with your larger drill bit, because this is metal. It's not plastic, and it will take a little bit of effort getting your holes to line up correctly. So to make it an easy job, drill your pilot hole, come back with your bigger hole, and I think you won't have any issues from there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this installed back on, and we'll see how it looks. Some tips on reinstalling this backer plate is to keep this handle here horizontally level like that. Get one screw started, try to line it up the way it should be, and then start the other screws. Now if the screws aren't going in easily, or if they're going in crooked, you need to stop and don't force them from going in. Realign your, your backer plate and try it again. And then once these three screws are tightened up, it should be really sturdy and you can try your handle and if you can watch right over here, you should see the latch come up as that right there. A zoom in view will show this coming up and unlatching the door. One additional test you may want to do is to exercise the release handle here. And that works. You can see how this is going up. So I'm going to close the door and try it. Okay, it works just fine. So the installation is complete. Again, check for the clearance for your screen door. Let's try this. Look at that. 
it's a tight fit, but it does slide over it, over the handle here. So it's been engineered very well. I think it's going to be a really good upgrade. Well, there you have it. All in all, it's about a 10 minute process to get your tools together and to get it installed. The longest thing being is drilling your holes and reinstalling it back on there. So it's pretty simple. Check the links below if you're interested in the products. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And until next time, I hope to see you down the road. Works just fine. Thanks for watching.